Welcome back kiddos. We're finishing up our last few videos on kinetics. This time we're going to work on a couple of AP free response. Now a critical point of kinetics involves graphical analysis. There's a number of pictures and graphs that you really need to be able to distinguish between these and label them and uh, determine values from those graphs. The first part, it gives us the diagram and this is a potential energy curve. And this is asking us two things. One is to get the uh, activation energy for the forward reaction. And then the other is to do the enthalpy change. Now, for the forward reaction, we're going to start with the energy of our activated complex. And then we would subtract the energy of our reactants and that would be our activation energy in our forward direction. So if you were given values, you would calculate that. This is our activated complex or transition state and then we would subtract the energy of our reactants. Remember it's always final minus initial. Now it also asks us for the enthalpy change of the reaction and to get that we would take the value of our reactants and we would subtract the value of, excuse me, the value of our products and we would subtract our reactants. And I know the arrow went up, but I was just showing you that we start with the final and move towards the initial. So delta H is the energy of our products, the potential energy minus the potential energy of our reactants. And in this case, it's negative because we have a small number and we're taking away a larger number, so we have a negative or exothermic value. Didn't ask us that. All it did was ask us to put the arrows on there or the lines on there. So as long as you put the lines, and not just put the lines, you need to label so that you were clear which one of these two you were referencing. Now, let's take a look at the next one. Make sure you highlight, you mark, you circle. Well, you can't highlight. Um, on my test, you can highlight, uh, but mark with your pencil, um, circle things. This is first order and it asks us to complete the graph. So make sure you pay close attention to what's on the Y axis here, especially time is on the X, not surprisingly in kinetics. And all it has here is the concentration of N2O5. Now, if this were a zero order, this would be a straight line. If it were second order, we'd have a pretty sharp curve there. It's not, it's first order, so you're going to have a, a little bit more of a gentle curve to it, but you have to have a distinct curve there. So that's how you would get your point for this, and they'll have this graph right on your answer sheet, your answer document for you to draw. Now, the second part asks you to describe, which means you have to use words, and I think it's actually helpful to draw on this graph as well. You will make your case a lot more clearly. We are going to find an instantaneous rate. So we would draw a tangent at that point. So you want to draw a tangent to the curve at the desired time. And you don't need complete sentences. Your bulleted list is just fine. So you want a tangent to the curve at your desired time. And then you get your rate is going to be equal to the slope of that tangent. So it's very important you get those two concepts in here. Note also here that the rate is going to be a negative value. That's because we're measuring it with respect to a reactant. And when you're measuring with respect to a reactant, reactants are consumed. And so you would have a negative value for your rate there. Now, the next thing says, all right, now that we have our rate, we need to consider the rate law and describe how we would get our rate constant. And so for three, let's draw, let's write our expression, rate is equal to K times our concentration of N2O5 to the first. Well, you have rate, you have the concentration at that time T, 
and you substitute in and solve for k. You don't have to do the calculation. They didn't give us any numbers. They're asking you to describe the calculation. Many, many young people know how to crank out mathematics without truly understanding the underlying concepts. And the goal here is to get at that underlying concept there. Now here it says if more N2O5 were added to the reaction, what would be the effect on K. Now, read that very, very carefully. It didn't ask what was the effect on the rate. It asked what's the effect on K. And so for this one, what we would have is nothing, nada. K is independent of concentration. It's not enough to say that it won't change. You're making like a 50-50 guess there. That's clear. What, is clear as it is independent of concentration. Rate changes with some concentrations, but not K. Now, we've spent some time on the Arrhenius equation, so hopefully you know by now that K will vary with temperature and activation energy. In other words, the actual reaction we're looking at, um, but it is independent of concentration and therefore will not change. Uh, those are what the points you want to make there. Now, for the next one, we have yet other graphs that we're generating from kinetics. And for the first one, it asks us to write the rate law expression for the reaction. And you want to watch those words justify. It's not enough to simply write the rate law expression. Well, we know that rate is equal to K times a to some power. Now, this is an overall. This is not an elementary. We cannot get the order from that coefficient. We have to get that from experimental data. So we have one graph here, and this graph I hope pretty clearly to you is a curve. It is not a straight line. And so one over a is not a straight line. Therefore, it's not second order. So we could eliminate that, and you need to eliminate that with a statement. When you are given two choices to discuss, you have to discuss, discuss both of them. So first point is going to be, since a graph of 1 over A versus time is not a straight line, we can make the conclusion that the reaction is not second order with respect to A. So now we have this other line here, this other graph, which is pretty clearly a straight line. Now, we don't have the zero order, so we don't have that to compare this to, but we have such a nice clean straight line with this one. This is natural log of A. You need to know that natural log of A versus time is a test for first order. And since it is a test for first order and it's a straight line, we can conclude that it is first order with respect to A. So you need two statements, that one over A versus time is not a straight line, therefore it is not second. Natural log of A versus time is a straight line, therefore we can conclude that it is a first order reaction. Now, lastly, it says, how do we determine the rate constant? You did this on your web assign. You did this in your lab with your crystal violet. So I hope now you know that that slope is equal to minus K. So you're going to have to make the statement, determine the slope. It doesn't ask you to do this. It doesn't ask you to calculate K. Although there are some numbers here, there's no numbers here. It says describe, determine the slope. You can't just say get K from the slope. You have to set the slope equal to minus K. So K is going to equal minus the slope. Well, since the slope is negative, the negative times a negative is going to give you that desired positive value for K because K has to be positive here. 
All right, so that is the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video right now and I'll, I'll have a couple more available for you online as well. So good luck.